three friends, tourists, found themselves in the midst of a blackout that happened in New York in 1977. Blackout in the United States, yeah, that happened 1970s so. So because they, their accommodation was up there on the 30th floor of a building, hotel, they said, how can we go up? Elevators are not working, except for the lights on the walls, you know, just to give people something that they don't bump each other. So said, we'd have to go up by the stairs, so using the stairs. And that's what they did. And one suggested, let's uh, tell stories so we don't get bored. You know, we'll not notice that we're being, we're tired. Imagine going up 30 floors. I'll take the first 10. I'll tell funny stories. You, second one, second one he pointed out, um, scary stories, ghost stories. Okay. The third one, yung mga nakakaiyak naman sa'yo. So from the 21st to the 30th, sad stories. Okay, that's not what they did. First one to talk about funny stories. They were all laughing up the way, not noticing that they have re reached already the 11th floor. So I said, oh, your turn. So nagkwento naman ng scary stories. Well, it's dark, so they got scared with the darkness. Not total darkness, so. 21st, oh, ikaw na. Sad stories. Okay, they were quiet. Hindi naman sila nag-iiyakan. When reaching the 27th floor, the storyteller of sad stories was saying, now this is the most sad story that I'll tell you. Sige na, what? Naiiwan ko yung susi sa baba. <clears throat> huh? That's a real sad story. Pero more sad for you. Ikaw ang bababa. Maghihintay na lang kami dito. Okay? But they had to go down. Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> well, it's a made-up story really. Not by me. When we go up by the gates of heaven and our Lord will confront us and face us and say dala mo ba yung susi did you bring the key the, what key Lord the key that you can enter I think the gospel is saying that to us be ready be prepared have that key for you to be accepted to have it Last Monday, when I also said the Mass here at 6.30, I was talking about love God, love of neighbors, the key. I'll just add something to that. I'll repeat a little of what I've said, shared last Monday, especially for those who did not enter Monday Mass. So the key. What do we th Maybe the question is, what should we do in our lives in order to be ready and be prepared when the time comes? when the Lord calls us. I call it living a life of humility. And specifically, a life of humility which means God is the center of my life. That's rather hard to do. You know why? This world has so many idols, money, gadgets, technology, relationships which even are wrong their work oh how how much modern human beings have found their idols and gods that God is not the center of our lives anymore so easy to say which means finding time for God that in every in every instance of our lives there he is, even in the most difficult times, and much more, I guess, in the most difficult times. I don't have to elaborate on that. Second one, a life of love, and this is what I shared last Monday. Loving God, loving the neighbor. That's why our Lord talked about it as the greatest commandment. Loving God with one's whole heart, whole soul, and whole mind, and whole strength. 
and loving the neighbor. Let me ask you, for we better ask ourselves, how am I as a member of my family? Do I show that love, kindness, and compassion to my co-family members? How am I in my community? Do I do the same? How am I, how am I for those who are working, in my place of work? Would people judge me as somebody who is a loving, caring person? God's love for God will always find its application in the love of the neighbor. The first reading for today is one from John who talked about, don't ever tell me, this is a paraphrasing of his words, don't ever tell me that you love God yet you don't love your neighbor. You're a liar. Nakikita mo eh. I love you, God. Pero dito, napak. You don't care about other people. That's not living a life of love. Thirdly, part of the key, living a life of prayer. Again, modern people have so much, so many things to do. They are so much concerned with the what you know what the concerns concerned with so much of what their lives need okay? family work getting rich etc etc that hardly people would find time to be quiet and in solitude that's why to the seminarians you know, I think that was father was it Father Aris Martin to the younger one? Solitude. Separation. What was the other one? And to the seminarians I'm talking now, be grateful for the moments, for the opportunities given to you in the seminary, for solitude. Ayaw na ayaw natin tumatahimik, di ba? Pero it's a treasure <clears throat> that not so many have, especially for those people outside of the seminary walls. Find time, finding time for God. Kung mahal natin ang Diyos, bibigay tayo ng panahon at oras sa Kanya. Kung mahal natin ang isang tao, bibigay tayo ng oras at panahon para sa Kanya. It's that logical. Okay? So the key, hingin sa atin ng Panginoon, o oh, sana susi, living a life of humility, centered on God, living a life of love, God and the neighbor, showing kindness and compassion in our lives as much as possible. And lastly, of course, living a life of prayer, giving space and time for God in our lives. If we live such a kind of life of humility, prayer, and love, can readily say to the Lord when the time comes, Anak, sana ang susi. Ito po. At alam niya. Because he sees what we do. You have lived a life of humility, a life of love, and a life of prayer. Welcome. Amen.